Well, hello there, everybody. I was planning on doing this the day before, but for some reason, every once in a while, I run into an issue with the Logitech webcam and Windows 10, and the crap just doesn't want to work, and then I have to uninstall, and it takes several tries to reinstall, but I'm here. Sorry, bitches. Let's well, like that it didn't go anywhere. I'm so sorry. Too bad, so sad. But anyways, it is Q&A time. Thanks to all of you that asked your questions. By God, one way or another, we are going to make this fun today. And before we get started, just a little quick shout out to this dude on Twitter. I think it's Shinsuke Styles. You're going to rue the day, sir. Rue the day. You don't look forward to the day that your hair looks like mine? Motherfucker. I am 37 years old. Sure, it's peaked up just a little bit over the years. It's not quite, quite as covering of the full forehead as I might like. But again, I am 37. You wish you will have this hairline at 37. There's no massive bald spot. There's no significant widow's peak. There's no Corbin Ambrose hair going on up in this mofo, okay? Hell, a lot of people, especially the ones watching this video, as I've said before and I will say again, Wish they had this hairline at 27, let alone 37. Yeah, I can't grow a beard like a fully functioning man because purity decided, eh, we're going to stop at the face here. But damn it, it's better to have hair up here than what a lot of you probably have on your nipples, your chest, and in your fucking back. You're going to sit there and talk about how this looks. Your favorite freaking wrestler is freaking Nakamoran. Looking like Miss Piggy with the grunge cut. Give me a break. Anyways, let's get on to the Q&A here. Disco Stern asks, Who wore it better? <laughs> Randy Orton's Raging Ring Boner or John Cena's WrestleMania Jort Johnson? <laughs> you know what's sad? It's like 30 years from now, people might randomly find one of these videos. Look and be like, hey, that's kind of a handsome fellow. Why is he talking about dudes and their erections and not expecting me to think a certain type of way about him? Well, you know, this is, this is a long story going back a long, long time. But when you talk about this, Cena's Jort Johnson versus Orton's Raging Ring Boner. It is Randy Orton because he truly is the Viper. You never know when it's going to strike. Viper. Viper. He finds a gopher. I mean, he's got the pose. Ask Chase Oliver the difference. Ask him the difference. I guess it doesn't really matter. Because even then, Orton can only make daughters. Anyways, and that's why he's a Breakfast Club member. But it's, it's always Orton in that case, isn't it? Isn't it? As we've probably heard over the years, Cena comes up just a little short. Cyanide Rain asked, Why do people blindly follow Cody Rhodes in insulting Disco Inferno when the latter was only stating his opinion? Um, Don't get me wrong, Disco Inferno is a bit of a dumbass. That said, though, Cody Rhodes has a significant problem with other people expressing their opinions. Um, especially like in some individuals instances where you have a lot of reason to have said opinion up to and including the shit Cody Rhodes has previously said. Cody Rhodes is a punk. Cody Rhodes is a bitch. Fuck Cody Rhodes. Even if what Disco Inferno said is stupid. And even if you say this, and even if you say that, Cody Rhodes needs to get the fuck over himself because ultimately, ultimately, the dude got opportunities that a lot of other wrestlers wouldn't have gotten because of who his family was and what his name is. He has to sit there and try to basically peel off of his dad's legacy by going by the American nightmare and trying to dye his fucking hair blonde. We know what the fuck you're doing, dude. Get the fuck over it. Um, but he's a D-bag. Plain out. And then Cyanide Rain also asked, would Dino Bravo be a great critic looking for plot holes? Plot holes as in bullet hole. <laughs> he would be great at it except for one problem. He's dead. Bang, bang. And let that be a lesson to all of you kids. 
Don't be smuggling cigarettes and get in trouble with the Canadian Mafia. Michael Corvin. What man and woman needs the money in the bank briefcase the most? I really don't know because the truth is, is I don't know right now who all is actually in both matches. It shows just how little interest I have. Asking me this type of question would be like asking me what it's like to have sex with a white woman. How the fuck would I know? Last time I saw a white vagina up close and personal, Bonnie Sue was passing me out giving birth to me 37 plus damn years ago. I have no clue. No idea. You know Michael better than I do, I would think. Um, I'm guessing Braun is in the men's Money in the Bank match. So by default, it might be him. If Samoa Joe's in that match, you could make maybe a stronger argument that it should be him, especially based off of the way his character is kind of featured, that it would work better for him, especially if he's on SmackDown. The women don't know, because I, I just don't know who's in the lineup. Anybody but Sasha Banks would be a good answer. A WNC podcast. Is it wrong to hold a grudge against Seth Rollins for ending Sting's career? You hold that grudge. Never, ever, ever let it go. Um, but, I mean, we're also talking about Sting was already in his mid-50s. And while the buckle bomb spot is so fucking stupid, and Seth Rollins should know not to do that spot with somebody like an icon like Sting, because you don't need to. Learn how to work a damn match. Sting still signed off on the spot. So... Yes, I know I express frustration with Rollins about it, and I still stand by that. But at some point in time, too, it's like, how many more matches does Sting really have anyways? Um, I'd hold more of a grudge about Sting not going over uh, Triple H at WrestleMania 31. Praise God, hug. On everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, Triple H wasn't letting that happen. Because one more time, the WWF had to beat WCW in the Monday Night Wars. Give me a fucking break. All right, Kieran Chase, who just recently graduated high school. Congratulations! Everybody should send them My Little Pony stuff. No, don't. Send them a new game. It's the... It's called the... <laughs> Ray Lewis, if I did it game. You can do things like throw your friends under the bus. You can sit there and plead out to obstruction of justice. And the most fun of all is trying to find where that bloody white suit is from that night in Atlanta all those years ago. It's a blast. A hoot! Uh, wasn't it great for Russo to... See, now this is exactly why I run on you and I gun on you, dude, because you ask bullshit like this. Wasn't it great for Vince Russo to have Jeff Jarrett go over Hogan at Bash of the Beach 2000? Three, two, one. One, two, three. What the heck is bothering me? Three, two, one! One, two, three! What in the fuck is bothering me? Of all the things you could ask me about, Karen, of all the things you want to know, this great wealth of knowledge and resources, and you want to continue to center it around a Memphis mid-card piece of crap who had to start two different wrestling companies as his own type of fucking pathetic vanity project so that way he can make himself relevant when he never really truly was relevant. And then they're going to sit there all these years later and listen to people talking about kissing his ass because oh, look what he did, he found this company and that company and how did that fucking work out? He always has been a Memphis mid-card piece of crap. 10,000 guitars dr broken, zero dimes drawn. Fucking joke that he's in the Hall of Fame, and a fucking joke that Russo wanted to do a work shoot like this with Hogan, of all people, at Bash of the Beach 2000. That's what I think of that. It's garbage. It's garbage. Connor Boyd. Are you interested in seeing The Undertaker versus AJ Styles, title versus career, at WrestleMania next year? No, because I don't want to see Taker wrestle anymore. Real talk. Uh, so, no. I mean, if it's going to happen, Styles might not be a bad dance partner, but nah. I'm good. Byron Andreas. Favorite place to get food in Richmond? Um, 
unfortunately, even though I've been out here like five years now, I haven't went to a lot of like, you know, mom and pop and local restaurants. It's been when I have gone mostly chain stuff. So that stuff you can find anywhere. Um, if you're, if you're looking at coming to Richmond on like a trip or something, um, I would just go online and see what people say about some of the uh, local places. Uh, had somebody tell me recently, uh, somebody who I think is pretty smart, uh, that Havana downtown is a really good place, but I haven't had it yet. Look forward to having it soon, though. Um, but like I said, I don't know a lot about the uh, like small local places at this point. Um, what else? Oh, Byron Andreas, what's your opinion on the Enzo Amore music video? I don't know. I didn't watch, and I don't care. How about that? There we go. Uh, Yellingworth, your feelings on Jeff... What is with all these fucking Memphis Maker piece of crap questions? Your feelings on Double J being the best IC champion of all time? Really? Like, you're expecting me now to start going and breathing real heavily and getting frustrated and getting upset. And then I launch into assume Jeff Jarrett position mode and everybody has kicks and giggles for a couple of minutes. I'm not doing that. I'm not giving you that pleasure. I'm not giving you that payoff, brother. Best of all time, my fucking ass. Like, how? who would even fucking think that that is true? Who in the hell would sit there and want to type that up and actually put that together as a coherent sentence and believe that there is any shred of truth to it whatsoever. The answer is apparently just you. That's my ass. Israel Carrillo. I hope I said that right. Uh, you used to run marathons a couple of years ago, right? You're giving me a lot of credit there. Marathons? Marathons? Uh, what exercises did you do to prepare yourself? No, a couple of years ago, I had gotten back into running, and I was running... But I was doing more like 5K road races, and then they would have like uh, open track meets up in the D.C. area, so I would do some of those. Um, but marathons, I've still never actually done a marathon. I've run half marathons. Um, I think the longest like workout um, in terms of mileage that I've run at a time would be like 20 miles. Uh, but that's going way, way back in the day. Back when I was just a... A tanned, lightish, blonde-haired, 18-year-old honky that weighed all of about 130, 135 pounds. So it's a, it's a long, long time ago, I assure you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What did I do to prepare myself? Um, I need to get back into it again, but I started having some a little bit of back trouble. Like I would run for like a mile, mile and a half, two miles, and then the back would start flaring up really bad. Um, it's better now, though. I don't know what the hell happened. Um, exercise you do to prepare yourself. Um, unfortunately, what a lot of people do when they start to run, and in particular, they start thinking about running 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons, they run a lot of fumble fuck miles. And what I mean by fumble fuck miles are just miles done at an incredibly easy pace where, yes, you're technically getting some type of aerobic workout, but how much are you really working out? They don't mix up the speed. They don't mix up the tempo. They don't mix up the variance. They don't sit there and mix up the type of workout. Um, if you train slow, you run slow, period. Like if I was in the shape to go run 30 miles s slow, I could do that. It takes several, several hours. Why the fuck would I want to do that? Or would I better be better off doing a 45 to 50 minute fart like workout where I mix in different levels of speed? Would I be better off doing some Tabata, some other type of high intensity interval training? Uh, would I be better off doing some type of tempo stuff? Um, the answer is yes to all that. Would I be better off doing sprint workouts, pure intervals? Would I be better off doing strides? Yeah, absolutely. Mix up that speed. And when you're talking about like trying to burn fat and get into shape quicker, um, you know, you can also throw in, especially once you get going a little bit. Now you could start doing some jump training. You could do strength training. Uh, that will always help significantly. Uh, plyometrics will be another good way to get some explosiveness going, um, help in terms of your speed. But and talking about like preparing myself, like when I'm going to start running again here really quickly, I will start off incredibly slow because I'm trying to ease myself into it. Because the fact is, I'm 37, so I'm not as young as I used to be. And 
I will take it very slow, but I will make sure that the mileage that I do put in, all of it counts. Like I'm not going to do a bunch of slow shit. You know, the way to prepare yourself for, let's say, a 5K is not to run six miles incredibly slow. It might be to run two miles at a tempo speed and then a little bit of a break, another two miles at a tempo speed of some kind, and then do some strides afterwards. Much more effective workout. Um, but good question. But no, I've never run a marathon. That's on the bucket list. Also, is like doing like an ultra marathon, like um, like uh, one of those fifty hundred mile races. I think that would be awesome to do. Uh, Songoshaku, did you enjoy the Taker Lesnar Hell in a Cell match from two thousand fifteen? Did I review that show? I don't know. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, I thought it was okay. Random match to ask about, though. A uh, voice of logic. How would you book Roman Reigns if you were in charge of his character? Um, the easiest thing to do is fuck the heel face dynamics that everybody's going to focus on. If you want him to be a physical badass, then you book him as a physical badass. Like I said, the whole thing with him and Lester, the story leading up to Mania this year. The second Roman didn't break out of the handcuffs, the whole story was lost. Because now you're trying to make this big fucking Samoan dude um, <clears throat> sympathetic. And it just doesn't work. If the dude can't get sympathy, if he can't get people to feel sorry for him, and you most certainly cannot write for a character to make the fans feel sorry for him, <clears throat> excuse me, then don't go there. You don't need to. Don't go there. Like you look at what they've done with Braun. In terms of making him a badass. They're not sitting there trying to get sympathy on a dude. And it really, really worked. Now you can't do the exact same thing with Roman Reigns. But you could have him be a guy that always believes in the right. You could have him sit there and defend people that are getting bullied. You know, especially if he's attached to certain people that the hardcore fan base likes. But ultimately, he shouldn't be looking for sympathy. He shouldn't be looking at conspiracy theories and all that other bullshit. Just make him a fucking badass. It's not that hard. And it's believable because <clears throat> he's a dude with decent size. He comes from a great lineage of Samoan wrestlers. Like, if you say in any way, shape, or form the dude is descended from Haku or High Chief Pietamayavia, and they tell you that those guys are badasses, they know they were badasses, especially Haku. For Christ's sake, he's like the Chuck Norris of professional wrestling when it comes to legendary stories. So you can't tell me you can't figure out a way to make Roman Reigns come across like a badass. That's what they should be doing. Um, what else? Oh, he also asked, do you see any redeeming qualities left in WWE? Not a lot of them, but not a lot of them. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not going to go through trying to run them down right now, but not a lot of them, no. LAT187, how different would WWE be if Punk didn't leave in 2014? It might be a little bit different, but honestly, who's to say he wouldn't have left by the end of that year anyways instead of right after the Royal Rumble? Who says he doesn't leave in 2015? Who says he doesn't leave in 2016? be very unlikely he'd probably be there at this point in time because there's always kind of a whiny, bitchy, petulant brat. And then he had some reasons to be. Um, and he'd been at it a long time, so eventually that shit will catch up with you. Um, but <clears throat> as far as what happens if he didn't leave, you really think there would be that much different? I don't really think so. Some of the names and faces could be different, but the result's still ultimately the same. Ashwin asks, A bigger disappointment, the Summer of Punk or the Nexus Burial? You could go with the Nexus burial because that buried seven dudes, really. I will still go with the Summer of Punk because this was just basically a ripoff of the Summer of Punk angle that ROH had done a few years before. So you even had the format there. You even had the outline there. And they still fucked it up. That makes it more disappointing, even though the Nexus angle should have obviously had a much better payoff. Uh, the King asked, why do people chant for Punk? I think part of it is they wish the dude was back. Part of it is they get frustrated with the WWE and some of the crap when the fa hardcore fans feel like the company's not listening to them in terms of how they present their product and who they present and how. Some of it's just sheer stupidity. Look, I am totally fine, even though hijacking is stupid, especially when you've already given the WWE your chop to get into the fucking show. 
And now we're going to sit there and chant and hijack and Okay, they don't care. They got their fucking money. I've told you before, they're in the reaction business. A decade plus of trying to hijack crap because you didn't like Cena. How'd that work out? You've been trying to hijack Roman Reigns for half a damn decade. How's that worked out? Four straight WrestleMania main events in your eyes, bitches. That's how it's worked out. You listen to the Schlag Daddy when I tell you this crap. But why do people chant for punk? Because they're idiots. Chant for AJ Styles or Daniel Bryan or I don't know any other number of guys that are actually in the fucking company. If you're going to do this dumb hijack crap, which ding dong dumb dicks does not work, then at least do it with somebody where it can help them potentially get over. Sit there and fucking chant for people that are not there. That's just dumb. That's just like saying, oh, I really like this wrestler and I really want them to get over. So when the WWE tries to present him as a heel, you fucking cheer him because you're stupid. Oh, I don't want to boo him. Oh, I don't want to boo him. Boo him and help him become a star in the way the company wants him to be. And then maybe at some point they'll do the shit the way you want them to, okay? God damn, it's not that hard. Simon Nader, chances of WWE having a two-day pay-per-view and would that work for WrestleMania? If WrestleMania gets much longer, that's going to be the only freaking option they have and that would be just terrible, just god-awful. Ah, can you imagine WrestleMania being... Don't give them any fucking ideas. Yeah, but the length of these pay-per-views is ridiculous. Like, look, wrestling is wrestling, but goddamn y'all, at some point in time, the length of these shows is getting incredibly out of hand. We got to at least pretend like we have some freaking lives out there. Uh, Jimmy asked, based off of looks, who do you prefer, Alexa Bliss or Mandy Rose? Um, I mean, y'all know me. It's not like either one of them are really my speed. Um, but I guess Alexa Bliss? I, I don't know. Again, you're asking me to pick white woman A, white woman B, blonde A, blonde B. It's just, yeah. Jesse McCray, will we ever see the return of the Impact Reviews? Never say never. Dan Dillon, thoughts on the Roseanne's tweets and the cancellation of her show. What she said was racist, but she also has a history of that crap. The fact that ABC all of a sudden decided they gave a crap, knowing that that history is out there, that history is known. Why all of a sudden do we give a shit now? That's my issue with it. Should have never brought the show back to begin with. This is going to be a problem. Now all of a sudden she says it's something like that ignorant racist crap again. And now all of a sudden it's an issue. Nah, fuck ABC. Clearly it didn't matter before. What the hell's the difference? Why does it matter now? Now when you've got the idiots that sit there and then try to bring up uh, the counter of well, what about Bill Maher? If you remember Bill Maher's show used to be on ABC. And then he got ridiculously fired. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was shortly after 9-11. And people were talking, Some one of the panelists was talking about uh, flying planes in the buildings was a cowardly act or blowing themselves up was a cowardly act. And Bill Maher said it's many things, but doing that isn't a cowardly act. You know, depending on your perspective, it may or may not be. In that immediate post 9-11 culture, that type of weak-ass crap got him fired, made him lose his show, which had ended up going to HBO. Just think about that. Now, when he goes on years later on HBO and he's using the N-word, I don't care if you got A-E-R at the end of it, honky, your ass is gone. So if you're going to focus on that and say he should have been gone if Roseanne's gone, completely agree. There's too much of this. It's okay if this person doesn't, but it's not okay if this person doesn't because there's all this different context and sometimes there is, yes, and sometimes there just isn't. But as far as Roseanne goes, she already had the history, so why does ABC give a crap now? But, yes, the show should have been canceled. You really want to be associated with that right now? Ugh. Rick Styles, will Anthony Davis stay in New Orleans or eventually join a super team? Well, unless a couple of people are coming to him to join a super team, uh, I feel like someday he might eventually go to somebody else. It might be some years away, but I can't imagine staying in New Orleans forever. Uh, this is MZP. What's the point of keeping Raw and SmackDown separate with co-branded pay-per-views? <laughs> exactly. What's the point? And Ryan Steele. Why do so many people still glorify Eddie Guerrero's failed WWE title run? Why are you sitting there? Like, you've got a whole... Like, Orton used to be the legend killer. Ryan Steele, we're going to now call you the legend shitter. That's your gimmick. That's your stick. 
Like, you enjoy looking at everybody's Legends Heroes icons, and your whole gimmick is to shit out of what they did. Let people have Eddie Guerrero as the champion, because it was a moment, damn it. It didn't have to be about it being a great title run. It was about the moment of them winning the belt after all those years, and then defending successfully at WrestleMania. Let the people have their moment, and damn it, let me have my moment! Legend shitter. Anyways, that's it for this Q&A. We had some fun, some giggles, some laughs. Thanks to all of you that asked your questions. I'll see you later.